If it's not too much trouble, may I ask you for a favor? Jin Wu nodded his head. One of my students is thinking of quitting school to become a hunter full-time after she went through the awakening process. She's not even coming to school anymore, as a matter of fact. Aha, uh -huh. such things were fairly common. If she continues to miss school this way, then the management won't have any choice but to act, you see. Even if she wishes to become a hunter, wouldn't it be better if she at least graduated from a high school first? Jin Wu nodded his head in agreement. Can you help me persuade that child so she gets to graduate safe and sound? The teacher did her best to smile. Jin Wu was curious about one thing here. That student, what was her awakened rank? From what I hear, it's the lowest rank. In other words, a rank he. She won't get to live long, then. Jin Wu inwardly clicked his tongue. That was the rank where one had to be especially careful about entering a dungeon. If one entered with an overly hyped mindset and without much preparation to boot, then one would become a cripple or dead almost without an exception. Such a thing happening to a kid around the same age as his little sister was a sad thing. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, that choice was that girl's to make. No one could say otherwise. It was a rather lamentable thing indeed. But he didn't feel like taking time out of his busy schedule to interfere in someone else's life choices. When the girl's name came out from the teacher's mouth, Jin Wu realized that he couldn't easily get up from his spot now. Yup, the Republic of Korea was indeed a tiny place. Huh? Jin Wu became rather speechless. The female student who declared that she'd become a hunter, she was none other than the underage kid. The lone female in the raiding team Yu Jin Ho had assembled. The one that briefly caused Jin Wu to worry slightly since she was still so young and all. Is it okay to bring a child here? Han song -yi. When he heard that name from Jin Ah's homeroom teacher, a flood of emotions briefly inundated him. So, he just had to confirm it for himself. And sure enough, the date Han song -yi began missing school coincided with the day Yu Jin Ho's team began its raiding missions. With that, it kinda became a bit harder to think of this matter as someone else's mess. What's going on? Han song -yi's eyes opened wider as she stared up at Jin Wu. And then, her expression became rather unimpressed. Wait, could it be that the hunter my teacher wanted to introduce me to was you? I don't know what my teacher told you, but I'm not interested in going back to school anymore. And I'm definitely not gonna give up being a hunter. Han song -yi curtly stated her position. Jin Wu spoke to her in an even tone of voice. I wasn't planning to tell you to quit being a hunter. Han song -yi's eyes widened further. I'm sorry, kids like her would always act completely opposite to what you tell them to do. So, he wasn't even planning to talk her out of it. No, all he had to was to show her what the reality was like, just once. That's what happened to me, anyway. He realized the truth after participating in his first raid. And that was. Reality was far crueler and heartless than his imagination had been. Jin Wu took a step closer. Han Songyi flinched noticeably and was about to retreat a step back. But upon realizing that such an action would make her look weak, she forcibly stopped her body from moving. Jin Wu now stood before Han Songyi. Although he didn't mean to, and no one would understand the meaning behind it, an ominous smile still found its way to Jin Wu's lips. I'm here to mold you into a better hunter. There was no need to persuade her to accompany him to a dungeon. She said okay, I'm coming. As soon as he told her that she now had an indelible opportunity to witness how the White Tiger Guild conducted its new recruit training exercise, she didn't even suspect that Jin Wu had any ulterior motives. As they walked to the van, Han song -yi asked him how he knew her teacher, and he simply showed her the photo of him and Jin Ah stored on the phone. You were Jin Ah's appa. Jin Wu drove Han song -yi to the location where the White Tiger Guild was holding its evening training. The area they were in was designated as a location where gates frequently appeared. Almost no human beings dared to live around here anymore, so it was quite convenient to park the van. From what he heard, almost 80% of houses here were deserted. The story went that, once the remaining populace moved out, the whole district would be shut down. So this young woman is her. Hello there. Han Song Yi lowered her head in greeting. While they were saying hellos in this fashion, a big muscular guy sauntered over and spoke in an irked tone of voice. Let's stop with useless chatter and get started already. We didn't come here for a picnic, and it's almost 9 p.m. The muscular guy didn't even wait for the response and walked back towards the gate. Something didn't feel quite right with that guy, so Jin Wu asked Haiyan Kai Chiao, Who was that? Oh, he's one of our new recruit. He's ranked A, actually. He must be feeling a bit unhappy after I asked him for his understanding earlier. He even asked me if I thought that going to a dungeon was a fun pastime or some such. He's a rank A. Haiyan Kai Chiao nodded his head thinking that such a reaction was reasonable, coming from a proud rank a hunter like that guy. Jin Wu asked again, 
What are the ranks of today's raid team members? 1 rank A, 7 rank BS, and 4 rank CS for the total of 12 members. A rank A and several BS just for a rank C dungeon. Well, their ranks might be high, sure, but they are still newbies, you see. We're trying to help them earn first-hand experience inside an easier dungeon. Haiyan Kaichiol spoke with some pride in his voice. He then added quickly that after today, these guys would immediately be inserted into high-ranked dungeons. Jin Wu's expression subtly changed. The gate was raided at sea. Compared to that, the members of the raiding team were simply too brilliant to the point that they were even blinding the onlookers with their auras. If the raid is too easy, the shock factor will lessen, though. That was what his main worry was about. But, he slowly shook his head. No, wait. If she sees it with her own eyes, she should still be able to feel it. Feel how weak and powerless a rank he would become inside a dungeon. That was. That alone would be sufficient. When can we enter? Still utterly oblivious to Jin Wu's real intentions, Han Songyi began whining already. When Jin Wu took a look at her, her expression showed how pumped up she was. Let's see how long you can keep that up. Wait, hold up for a second, please. Haiyan Kaichiol sneaked a glance around him and then whispered something to Jin Wu's ears. Um, excuse me, Seong Jin Wu Hunter Nim. If you decide to step in, today's raid will become too easy, so please, refrain from doing anything in there. Please, since Jin Wu's purpose today was to simply observe, obviously he wouldn't enter the fray. I won't step in. And so, Jin Wu and Han Songyi approached the gate. Unlike that rank a hunter, there were some people who welcomed the duel rather happily. Hello, nice to meet you. Since they weren't here to make money, the higher the headcount, the better it would be for everyone. As it was customary, they introduced each other. But when it was the turn of the rank a hunter, I don't care. He simply walked inside the gate. Before Han Songyi entered, she turned her head to look at Jin Wu. What about you? Jin Wu crossed his arms and replied to her. After I see you enter first. Han Songyi's face was stiff with nervousness, but she still resolutely nodded her head and jumped into the gate. Hum. Jin Wu took a quick breath and stood before the gate. The surface of the gate continued to ripple softly non-stop. But, shouldn't the surface return to being a solid black barrier once a person goes through it? Right now, it was continuously rippling about like the surface of water. Something was off here. Could this be? Jin Wu quickly spun his head around and met Haiyan Kaichiol's gaze. At this point, even Haiyan Kaichiol had sensed something was very wrong. Jin Wu loudly shouted at him. Call your main raid team. Hurry. As soon as he finished shouting, Jin Wu was automatically sucked into the gate. The gate's surface. It's changing to a red color. As if a drop of blood had fallen in it. The surface of the once black gate was now slowly changing to the crimson red color. Chief, it's the red gate. The gate our people just walked into changed to a red gate. What? What are you talking about? How can a rank C change to a FC King red gate? Haiyan Kaichiol raised his head and stared at the gate, now dyed completely in the color of blood. The ripples on the surface had stopped now, too. Haiyan Kaichiol nervously swallowed his dried saliva. I don't know how, but it's definitely a red gate, Chief. It really is a red gate. Beek Yun Ho's own complexion hardened instantly after checking out the gate's color. What was a red gate? It was a terrifying phenomenon where the dungeon beyond it would actually connect to a whole new world, not some underground cavern. And in order to escape from it, either you had to kill the boss of the area, or wait for the dungeon break to occur. In other words, once you stepped inside, it'd be the end. Once the gate changed its color to red, all external influences would be completely cut off. Escaping from it, and trying to enter it, both of these activities were now impossible. I thought this was supposed to be a rank C gate. Sir, it was a rank C. Did you call the association to confirm it? Yes, sir. However, the association is insisting that it's still a rank C gate. Those god DMN sons of BT Chess. Beak Yun Ho angrily cussed out. A red gate would only occur when the dungeon itself was ranked very high, to begin with. There was a whole new world on the other side of the gate, yet the leaking magical energy only equaled that of a rank C dungeon. That crap wouldn't fly anywhere. Even from a casual glance, he could tell this thing should have been ranked B, at the bare minimum. If unlucky, rank or worse, something even higher than that. However, the only reason why the association still had the audacity to insist they were not wrong. Sir, should we use our own equipment to measure the magic energy? When Haiyan Kaichiol asked him, Bi Kyun Ho shook his head. No magic energy leaks out from a red gate, so it's impossible to measure it now. There was no concrete way to find out what the problematic gate's actual rank was at this point in time. And besides, the rank of this DMN gate wasn't important anymore. How many of our people went in there? Total of 12, sir. 
how many are high-ranked hunters, as the leader rank a Kim Chial hunter Nim, and there are also seven rank B hunters as well. One rank A and seven rank BS. The new recruits, will they be all right? Bi Kyunho slowly shook his head. If lucky, the rank A and two, three rank BS might make out alive. Only if those trapped inside enjoy Lady Luck's blessing. That was. That was how lacking these numbers were. With the current composition of the raid team, they should only be enough to barely conquer the weakest of rank B dungeons. Anything tougher than that, and you'd be asking for way too much. Without some kind of a miracle, the odds of their new recruits returning alive was as good as none. Li Kyunho's complexion darkened even further. Haiyan Kaichiol studied the mood of his boss and cautiously opened his mouth. Sir, actually, there was someone else who also entered the gate along with our recruits. Li Kyunho shifted his gaze to his subordinate, his expression changing slightly. Could it be that a high-ranking hunter was in the vicinity and entered along with the team after getting curious about the training process? What else could qualify as a miracle? He's the hunter I've been trying to scout for the last few days, sir. Are you saying that the hunter you've been keeping an eye on is in there, too? Is that it? Yes, sir. Shifan's instincts were almost always never wrong. What if a spark of hope was lit in Bikyun Ho's heart? What is his rank? Is it I? Or maybe a B? If this hunter was ranked S, then Bi Kyun Ho would have known the identity of this mystery hunter. There were less than 10 rank S hunters in the whole of South Korea, after all. However, On Song Min was shaking his head. Oh my god. Bi Kyun Ho's hardened face finally brightened up considerably. Are you saying that a rank S hunter also went in there? On Song Min calmly replied. No, sir. He's a ranky. Almost right away. Bi Kyun Ho's expression crumpled to a man who accidentally chewed on bugs. Jin Wu couldn't help but get flustered here. Could this be the gate that supposedly takes you to another world? It'd be his first time experiencing one, but he had read all about it online, from the testimonies of those who managed to survive it. When he opened his eyes, he was standing in the middle of a wintry forest, completely covered in white snow. What is this place? This doesn't look like the interior of a dungeon, does it? Hey, look. The gates disappeared, too. Other hunters were looking around in confusion, unable to hide their panic as well. While they were getting more and more flustered, Jin Wu calmed himself down, narrowed his eyes, and scanned the surrounding area. I don't sense anything suspicious. Thanks to the system repeatedly sending him to weird places, Jin Wu had gotten used to being in an unexpected foreign environment, which also meant that he could gain his calmness quickly. Han Song Yi had approached him and began tugging at his clothes in the meantime. Boom, excuse me. Something bad happened just now, right? She looked really scared. Her previous self-confidence was nowhere to be found. But then, Jin Wu's hand suddenly shot out towards Han Song Yi's face. Han Song Yi's eyes opened super wide. The arrow caught in Jin Wu's hand trembled continuously as if it lamented missing its target. And that would be the middle of Han Song Yi's forehead. Finally realizing what just happened, her face paled in an instant. However, the expected scream came from somewhere else. A male hunter fell to the snowy ground with blood bubbling out of his mouth, an arrow lodged deep in his temple. The snowy ground was soon dyed in his blood. Hunters began gasping out in shock. Two arrows flew in at the same time, one aimed at Han Song Yi, while the other one hit its mark. Because of that, though, no one saw Jin Wu catching the other arrow. Over there, it's those B-stars. One of the rank B hunters pointed towards the top of a tree located far away. But, even before he had begun pointing his finger, both the gazes of Jin Wu and Kim Chial were fixed there. They could see two life forms standing over there on the snow-covered branches. Two people, no, I should say two creatures, huh? Long white hair, icy white skin, and silver eyes, and the race-specific trait of pointy ears. These monsters were famed for their particularly beautiful countenances, as well as for their rarity, as they could only be encountered in high-ranked dungeons. Ice Elves, also known as White Phantoms, those who had never encountered one referred to them as Ice Elves, but the hunters who did encounter them and fought with them, all took to calling them White Phantoms, instead while also adding that a pretty name like Elf shouldn't be mixed together with these abominable creatures. Jin Wu could immediately guess why the hunters before him all gnashed their teeth at the mere mention of the white phantoms. They are laughing at us, huh? The two archers have lowered their bows and disgusting smiles were clearly visible on their faces. It was as if they were staring at a table full of delicacies and couldn't decide which one to start eating. And you decided on this, huh? Jin Wu's eyes narrowed to a slit. One arrow to the far left and another one to the far right. That was no coincidence. A hunter with an arrow stuck in his head was a 30-something who had gone through the awakening process only recently. With the exception of Han Songi, he'd be the weakest of the group. 
As for the other arrow, it was aimed at Han Songyi. Indeed, the arrows were meant for the two weakest members of the team. If it weren't for the system, I'd be the one with an arrow stuck in my head, instead. He raised the caught arrow so the creatures could see, and broke it in half. Crack, perhaps taking that as a challenge, the white phantom who shot that arrow pointed at Jin Wu and drew a line under his chin. Seeing that, Jin Wu simply smirked. However, his eyes were definitely not laughing. I'll kill you with my own hands. Receiving the trivial provocation of the monster, Jin Wu simply glared coldly as his reply. Soon, the pair of white phantoms disappeared below the tree. Looks like this is their way of welcoming us. Finally, Kim Chiao opened his mouth. The lone rank of the group opened his mouth, prompting everyone to focus their gazes on him as if they had made an agreement prior to coming here. Actually, he was the leader of this raid team, so that might have been it, though. I'm sure some of you have realized it by now. This is inside the red gate. Kim Chiao spoke as if it was the most obvious thing in the whole world. Of course, no one complained about that. Which means, no one will be able to enter here after us, until either we all die, or there is a dungeon break. The group all gasped out softly. The fact that they could no longer hope for a rescue came across as a big mental shock. Meanwhile, Kim Chiao continued on. If we remain here, we'll all die from this freezing cold, or from those beastards ambushing us. However, I'm going to clear this place and get out of here, by myself if necessary. Are there any of you who wish to join me? Kim Chiao's powerful, confident stare and his broad shoulders imparted a certain sense of trust. Hunters glanced at each other for a bit, before unanimously voicing their desire to travel together with him. Let us move together. I'd like to join you. Let's go back together, alive. I want to help, too. However, Kim Chiao shoved away the chest of the male hunter who said he wanted to help. Even though he controlled his physical strength, at the end of the day, he was still a rank of the male hunter retreated several steps back. A deep frown etched on his face from the immense pain coming from his chest. Excluding you. Excuse me. And also, you, 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 and you. Kim Chiao pointed to a few more others, not just that male hunter. Of course, both Jin Wu and Han Song Yi were included in that. It was here that Jin Wu's own forehead creased up ever so slightly. All in all, five people in total. They were all either rank C or lower. It's unfortunate, but I won't be taking you along. What did you say? Do you know anything about red gates? The male hunter shook his head at Kim Chiao's question. In here, one day equates to one hour outside. The worst case scenario, it'll take several months for the dungeon break to occur or I kill the boss. Under that kind of situation, I can't walk around with baggage like you. We're baggage to you. The hunters who were pointed out by Kim Chiao got all riled up. But once the rank a hunter glared at them, they all shut their mouths close. Kim Chiao continued on, now sounding as if he was being considerate and all. Don't feel too bad, however. If all of you manage to survive until we kill the boss, then all of you will go back home alive, too. Even still, the singled out hunters sent out desperate, pleading stares to the hunters near Kim Chiao, but not a single one stepped forward. No, they were far too busy avoiding meeting the gazes. It was then, excuse me, a rank B female hunter from Kim Chiao's group raised her hand. Kim Chiao turned to look at her, and she pointed at Jin Wu. It's fine to go over there from here, right? Do what you want. She didn't even look back once and walked straight to Jin Wu's side. Kim Chiao alternated his gaze between the woman and Jin Wu and smirked derisively, before declaring out loudly, We've got an opening this side, so I'll accept one more person. Me, me. The male hunter who got shoved away by Kim Chiao just now hurriedly ran over, fearing that the lone Renka in the group, and the leader, might change his mind. Jin Wu stared at the woman now standing next to him with a puzzled expression on his face. Her gaze met with Jin Wu's, and she whispered in a low voice so no one else could hear. That man Kim Chiol. Well, he couldn't see the arrow flying in, you see. Even if one was a high-ranked hunter, there was no way every stat of his would be developed equally. For instance, he might be a rank A, but his agility could be low. Jin Wu knew how stats worked, so he didn't think too much about that. So, what are you saying? Then, the woman smiled refreshingly. I'm guessing you're not a ranky am I right? Beak Yun Ho's expression remained gloomy. On Song Min provided a short summary on who Xiang Jin Wu was, but his anxiety level hadn't decreased by one bit. In the end, that's all speculation, isn't it? Yes, sir. You're right. On Song Min readily accepted that assessment. It was true that he didn't know anything about Xiang Jin Wu, after all. But, if the boss checked Hunter Xiang Jin Wu out with his own eyes, he'd have changed his mind right away. There was something different about Xiang Jin Wu, and the fact that he couldn't adequately describe that with words frustrated on Song Min to no end. Beak Yun Ho's gaze shifted back to the red gate. In the end, the only person I can believe in is Kim Chiao. 
It was then. Sir, there won't be any problems with Hunter Kim Chial, I assure you. It was Ju Xiong Chan, chief of the first division of the White Tiger Guild. He scanned the three people in front and spoke in a proud voice. I've been training Hunter Kim Chial quite strictly, so he could be ready for all contingencies. Originally, the initial training of new recruits was left to the second division, but the first division would be in charge of the awakened ranked or higher. Those promising individuals who were scheduled to enter the ranks of the main combat force soon got to enjoy a different starting point from everyone else. Seeing Ju Xiong Chan's confidence, Bi Kyun Ho's expression softened slightly. How were Hunter Kim Chial's grades? They are excellent, sir. Just his combat capabilities alone. He'd not fall behind anyone from the current members of the guild's main combat force. Is that so? A smile managed to return to Bi Kyun Ho's lips. Kim Chial was a rank even among high-ranked hunters. He was a talent that must be held on to. Ju Xiong Chan managed to calm the boss man down and narrowed his eyes at On Song Min, clearly in derision. From what I heard just now, a ranky hunter who might have gone through a reawakening process, was it? You were saying something about that. Ju Xiong Chan snorted dismissively. My hunter Kim Chial should prove to be more effective than someone like that. A hunter with no proven qualities. On Song Min's expression hardened. He was being looked down on here. However, he didn't raise his voice and let anger take over him. Let's just wait and see who's correct at the end of the day. The four men shifted their gazes at the same time over to the red gate that had trapped their hunters. I'm guessing you're not a ranky, am I right? The female hunter asked Jin Wu quite openly. Jin Wu opened his mouth in response. Well, then, let me ask you something as well. Of course, Jin Wu shifted his gaze over to Kim Chial and the hunters gathering around him. They were busy planning their next move before they got going. You guys, you're supposed to be new recruits, yet how can you be this calm? The first thing we've been taught is that anything can happen inside a dungeon, you see. Anything could happen inside a dungeon, she said. Jin Wu knew this fact better than anyone here, actually. Every one of us has been trained properly, especially that Kim Chial over there. He even received a special training regime, too. He's scheduled to join up with the White Tiger's main combat force. They didn't fear dungeons because they had received prior training. Knowing something and experiencing it are two different things. More so, when your fragile belief of you knowing everything about dungeons develops just a tiny little crack, it did all come crashing down like a dam with a hole getting swept away by the deluge of water. Building up one's confidence took a long time, but breaking it down only took a single moment. He could see the fate in store for Kim Chial's team already. My question, you haven't answered it yet. The question about whether he was a ranky or not. She seemed to be a rather tenacious customer, this woman. Why should I tell you that? He replied in a blunt and a bit curt manner, but the female hunter, Park Huey Jin, was now crying out in elation and clenched her fists. Inwardly, of course, Park Huey Jin had met many people in her life and she immediately knew what Jin Wu's response meant. And that would be his unbridled confidence. Jin Wu's eyes and Kim Chial's met. We will. Kim Chial's voice was harsh, low. Didn't matter what he was trying to convey here. He sounded threatening and menacing. He using the road. He didn't saunter over here just to declare which path they would be using, though. No, Kim Chial's eyes were asking what Jin Wu's group would do. Along with the hidden threat of don't you dare follow us. Jin Wu scanned his surroundings once more, before reverting his gaze back to Kim Chial. And we will be going through the forests. I'll wish you luck. Well, you guys will be the ones needing that luck later on, though. Jin Wu didn't mouth his inner thoughts, however. What a bunch of idiots. Excuse me. Look over there. Kim Chial uncrossed his arms and pointed towards some trees. Not just one or two, either. Everywhere he pointed at, trees bore the scars that suspiciously looked like claw marks of potentially gigantic creatures. That, isn't that. It's a bear. An ice bear. A bear-type monster, infamous among all the beast-type monsters is the most ferocious. Those claw marks were them marking their territory. The hunters in Kim Chial's group saw those and clicked their tongues. Tsk, tsk. It had been better if they stayed put here and waited till the end. Looks like innocent people will die because of a ranky taking the lead. I mean, would that ranky have received any prior training like us? Kim Chial stared at the forest and chuckled derisively. That's to be expected from a measly ranky. Wait. Suddenly, Kim Chial's smile disappeared. Most of that group is rank CS, and there is a rank B among them too, so how come? How come he thought Jin Wu was that group's leader? Indeed, he hadn't felt that anything was amiss right up until he realized this weird incongruency by himself. Still, Kim Chial shook his head. 
Well, it doesn't matter. They were all going to die soon, anyway. Worrying about themselves took precedence over what would happen to the weaklings who wouldn't last for long, to begin with. There was nothing he could do about the dead, but well, shouldn't the ones that were supposed to live, live on? Jin Wu took the lead and walked up ahead. But before long, Park Huey Jin stood in front of him. What is it? Have you lost your mind? Jin Wu crossed his arms and displayed how unhappy he was to hear that, meaning she'd have to be careful with her follow-up. Perhaps she understood Jin Wu's warning. Park Huey Jin's voice had softened somewhat. I'm sorry, but I need to say this. Park Huey Jin's finger pointed towards one of the surrounding trees. Can you see that? There was a huge claw mark on the tree's bark. Over there, too. And there. Almost every single tree had their barks greatly damaged and it was hard to find one that was still intact. This entire place is full of the bear's territorial markings, you know. This entire forest is the bear-type monster's habitat. Park Huey Jin thought that Jin Wu would show one of the three responses, get angry, get stunned, or accept what she told him. Unfortunately for her, her expectation was wide off the mark. She was the one advising him against the irrational and hasty decision here, yet it was Jin Wu looking at her as if she was the idiot. Why? Why is he looking at me like that? Park Huey Jin's face reddened up from anger. Her voice rose up again. Jin Wu spat out a long sigh and opened his mouth. That is precisely why we're moving through the forest. Eh? Park Huey Jin's eyes went round in confusion. She still doesn't get it even with that massive hint. Jin Wu had little choice but to tell it straight to her. When we're moving through the forest, we only have to worry about ice bears. Only then did Park Huey Jin understood Jin Wu's intention. The meaning behind lots of ice bears was simple, that there were no other monsters strong enough to hunt ice bears in this forest. To be more precise, the group didn't have to worry about fighting monsters stronger than ice bears here. Why haven't I thought about that? Park Huey Jin became ashamed about shouting at Jin Wu just now. Her head dropped low, even the skin of her neck reddening up from embarrassment. Jin Wu didn't know how strong these ice bears were, but he was sure of them being weaker than those two white phantom archers. They were wearing clothing that looked to be made out of bear felt. That was why he had chosen the forest route. He was thinking of traversing the forest and increasing his level, and at the same time, keep an eye out on Kim Chial's group and the movements of the white phantoms while waiting for his chance to act. That was the safest way available. Park Huey Jin's face was far too red to be normal. She couldn't raise her head and managed to squeeze out a voice that was smaller than a buzzing mosquito. It, it's because, too cold, Jin Wu spat out a long groan and summoned his store. He quickly browsed through the items for sale and spotted thick fur coats and shoes designed for winter. Fur coat and the shoes cost 10 gold each. Unlike items with added effects, regular items didn't cost a lot to buy. No, compared to the amount of gold in his possession, they were oh so cheap. Still, I'd never have guessed that I have to buy Japtum with my gold. Jin Wu chose buy for all of them. Since he couldn't just give to some and ignore others, Jin Wu spent 100 gold and bought the articles of clothing for all five people. Five coats and five pairs of boots suddenly popped up in front of his eyes. And of course, the eyes of all four people, excluding Jin Wu, all grew super wide. Was that separate space magic? Park Huey Jin was taken aback, too, and she hurriedly raised her head to look at Jin Wu. Not caring whether they were shocked or not, Jin Wu spoke to them disinterestedly. Put them on. He finished speaking and reached down to grab the closest fur coat. But then, Han Song Yi suddenly grasped his sleeve. Just what's going on with you? You managed to catch that arrow, and now you use some strange magic to take these clothes out, too. Frowns formed on the forehead of Jin Wu. It didn't take a genius to figure out that. At this rate, he'd be swarmed by the endless streams of questions and get irritated to no end. Right, let's use this chance to clearly draw the line. Jin Wu raised his voice and spoke in a firm voice. Han Song Yi, I brought you here with me, so I will take full responsibility and protect you. However, Jin Wu's voice became colder next. Don't ask me about anything. Jin Wu then swept his gaze against Park Huey Jin as well as other hunters tagging along. The same goes for the rest of you. Do not ask me anything, and do not demand anything from me. He didn't stop there, though. If you don't like it, then you can just leave now. I won't stop you. There was one more thing, one more reason why Jin Wu chose the forest route. Status window. Jin Wu silently summoned his status window and swapped his current title from the one who overcame the adversity to that of the slaughterer of wolves. A title given to a hunter skilled in hunting wolves. When facing animal type monsters, all of your stats will increase by 40%. A chance to abuse this plainly cheating buff had fallen on his laps, 
so why should he go anywhere else now? It was then. The hunters all began screaming out loudly. It, it's the bear. It's the ice bear. An ice bear that had picked up on the sense of humans was slowly trudging towards the group. These humans were its enemies that had invaded its territory. Obviously, it did not look too kindly towards the intruders. The creature did resemble a polar bear, but it was almost twice the size, and the magic crystal, the symbol of all monsters, could be seen in the middle of its chest area as if it was some kind of a proud emblem. Roar. It roared out furiously, the ground seemingly quaking under its might. All the hunters, excluding Jin Wu, all froze stiff on the spot after hearing the ice bear's roar. Park Huey Jin's expression crumpled unsightly. Oh, so we only need to be mindful of ice bears, was it? How could anyone say that sort of nonsense after seeing that monster? She almost fell for Xiang Jin Wu's pretty convincing argument. But, upon seeing an ice bear, she was certain of one thing. We definitely shouldn't have chosen the forest route. Sensing the approaching danger to the group, Park Huey Jin stepped out in front of the group and shouted out, I'll draw its attention towards me, so everyone must. The scruff of Park Huey Jin's neck was yanked back by a considerable force, and she had to backstep several times to make sure that she didn't end up on her butt. After somehow regaining her balance, she raised her head only to find Jin Wu standing before her. Hey, what was that all about? I'm telling you this right now. I'll be killing all the monsters from now on. Obviously, he couldn't let anyone steal his experience points, now could he? For Jin Wu, these bears were perfect health tonics to buff him up for his inevitable showdown with the true enemies of this place, the White Phantoms. Ha, huh? Park Huey Jin couldn't hide her astonishment. No matter how strong you think you are, that thing is a monster of a high-ranked dungeon. Completely ignoring Park Huey Jin's furious voice coming from behind him, Jin Wu walked right towards the ice bear. Well, it's not going to be okay to use daggers for this one. The blood splatter would make a mess of things, wouldn't it? Jin Wu had already summoned his two daggers almost out of reflex, but stored them back in his inventory. Instead, he clenched his fists tightly. Well, I promise to just observe, but this is an emergency, so I'm sure they'll understand. Right. Jin Wu's glare collided mid-air with the ice bear's roar. Jin Wu was already above the ice bear's head. It was here that he kind of understood the reason for this monster's infamy. Even then, he also sensed that all his level-ups until now weren't in vain. Before the ice bear could lift its head up, Jin Wu punched with all his might right in the middle of the monster's forehead. Kaboom. The head of the ice bear slammed down on the snowy ground with an explosive force. Its skull was completely obliterated, with its limp tongue hanging outside the slack maw, the ice bear stopped moving completely. Hell yeah. He was thinking that his level up was just around the corner, and now, he was glad to have stopped Park Huey Jin from taking any action. You, you, just what are you? Jin Wu heard that trembling voice and looked behind him, only to spot four speechless faces staring back at him. Jin Wu sheepishly scratched the side of his head. I warned them earlier because I didn't want to run into this sort of situation. It seemed that a person would become rather forgetful whenever he or she witnessed something utterly beyond their capacity to understand. Left with little choice, Jin Wu had to state his position once more. I told you, I'll not tolerate anyone asking me questions. If you're unhappy with my methods, then. Jin Wu pointed his finger in the direction of Kim Chial's team. With a complicated expression, Bi Yun Ho recalled his experiences. Once you cross the gate, the place you end up could be a desert with temperatures soaring past 60 degrees Celsius, or it could be a dense jungle full of poisonous insects and snakes. Or, it could be the middle of a snow-covered field where it's so cold that you'd immediately develop frostbites. Even when you're in such a perilous situation, you still have to fight monsters as well. Let's say that you've somehow adapted to your new environments. From then on, you will have to procure food. Indeed, one would have to secure enough food to last a few weeks at a minimum, or at worst, for several months. In Bi Yun Ho's mind, the hunters rank C and below were already as good as dead by now. Evening. Large chunks of meat were nicely sizzling on top of a campfire. You know, this bear meat, it's a bit chewy but not as bad as I thought. Would you like some more? Thank you kindly. Go Myung H1 expertly sliced the meat of the ice bear and placed them on a plate pushed forward by Yun Kai Jung. These two men were the rank C hunters following Jin Wu. Both Park Huey Jin and Han Song Yi were also slowly chewing on the bear meat, although their portions weren't as large as the men's. Please pass me the pepper. What about salt? The seasoning's just about fine, so it's okay. They all look to, more or less, have adapted to the living conditions of the dungeon. Don't you think the attacks of the ice bears have lessened lately? Park Huey Jin replied to that question. Well, that's because the team leader has annihilated their numbers, that's why. That man, it's like he has some sort of unresolved vendetta against these bears from his previous life or something. 
His eyes go all crazy when he spots an ice bear. He's so scary whenever he does that. Really, really scary. Now that I think about it, where did the team leader disappear to? Young Kai Jung had his head almost buried in the plate as he chomped down on the meat, but still raised his head to make his reply. He went out a little while ago, saying that he's going to take a look around here. Huh? Park Huey Jin formed a helpless expression, roaming inside a high-ranked dungeon all alone. Isn't he scared at all? Young Kai Jung formed a sly grin. If it's him, it's not going to be a problem. Jin Wu searched through the forest and made his exit as he brushed past some thickets. It must be somewhere nearby. Found you. Just a quick head count and he found over 30 bears. In other words, this was literally a bear farm. The corners of Jin Wu's lips arched up. He deliberately came here alone to eliminate the possibility of eyewitnesses. This would be the perfect opportunity to utilize his shadow soldiers. Indeed, he had been waiting for a moment like this. Come out. When he inwardly called out, the soldiers wearing black armor soundlessly materialized and surrounded him. You all understand that this is your first sortie, right? What he meant by that was, just as one's impression was decided upon through the first encounter, these guys would have to impress him with their first battle, too. The shadow soldiers stood at attention in eerie silence, with nary a hint of disorder. Nice. Jin Wu smirked deeply, seeing them like that. Meanwhile, more and more ice bears began emerging from the caves after detecting Jin Wu's scent. Looks like the other side is done preparing, too. Jin Wu pointed at the ice bears. Go. As soon as his order was issued, the shadow soldiers rushed forward as if they were sliding on ice. The shadow soldiers rapidly closed in on their targets. Unfortunately, the angry swipes of the ice bears' front paws were faster than their movements. A single hit, and one shadow soldier was obliterated. If it wasn't a shadow underneath the armors but an actual human being, that attack would surely have ripped him apart into several pieces. Hmm. Jin Wu frowned deeply. As I thought, did I ask for too much? Whether it was their physical strength or their body sizes, these ice bears were difficult enemies for the shadow soldiers to fight against. However, something quite surprising happened next. Jin Wu's eyes opened wider. The soldier with its chest torn open by the ice bear's attack suddenly transformed into a clump of black smoke just before it fell to the ground. The black smoke coagulated in a spot a couple of steps away, and it reverted back to its original appearance. And so, as the infantrymen bought time out in front, the magic soldiers standing at the back had completed their spells. Boom. The balls of flames leaving the ends of the magic soldiers' hands exploded here, there, and everywhere. The shadow soldiers swept up and the explosions regenerated right away. But on the other hand, the ice bears could only roll around screaming in sheer pain and agony as their bodies caught on fire. Meanwhile, the shadow soldiers didn't waste time and swiftly approached the defenseless bears before stabbing down on them with their blades. Jin Wu continued to spectate on the proceedings with an expression filled with great interest and happiness. The infantrymen and their quick regenerative abilities, the magic soldiers and their superb firepower. The overall combat prowess of the shadow soldiers had far exceeded his initial expectations. Soon, the ice bears were forced into retreat by the might of the shadow soldiers and were pushed back towards the entrance of the caves. Accompanied by the eardrum's shaking roar, a huge shadow slowly emerged from one of the caves. Isn't that? Even Jin Wu's eyes grew extra round and super large. The bear that came out was at least a head taller and double the body size compared to others around it. Just a single swipe from this huge bear and multiple soldiers were blown away. The regeneration rate of the soldiers could not keep up with the huge ice bear's relentless attacks. Jin Wu could only leak out a groan after seeing that. So, it's the leader of the pack, is it? He kind of suspected that, since there was a pack, there should be a leader leading it, too. Once his MP had been drained, the obliterated shadow soldiers didn't regenerate and simply entered back into Jin Wu's shadow. In other words, in order to regenerate the lost soldiers, he needed lots more mana. With the appearance of the ice bear leader, the flow of the battle had reversed completely. However, Jin Wu still had plenty of leeway. Since their boss has shown up, this side should also step up. Jin Wu summoned the boss of the shadow soldiers. Igret, one more shadow escaped from Jin Wu's shadow. And from that shadow, a knight wearing a helm with decorative mane rose up soundlessly. Jin Wu pointed forward with his chin. Igrit bowed to Jin Wu before rushing towards the ice bear leader. Igrit unsheathed his longsword and deftly evaded the bear's enraged attacks, all the while shaving away at the giant monster's body with his blade. 
tendons, claws, front paw, legs, torso, bits and chunks of meat from various areas of the monster sheared off and fell to the ground piece by piece. Huh? Jin Wu could only gasp out in admiration at Igrit's crafty and elaborate movements. The last place Igrit hit was the bear's head. Slice. The giant ice bear's head separated from its body and flew away. Before it landed on the ground, though, Igrit easily snatched it. He trod proudly towards Jin Wu and knelt before him. And then, he placed the dead bear's head before Jin Wu's feet. It was as if the knight was presenting the spoils of victory to his sovereign. Jin Wu swallowed dry saliva and gazed at the kneeling Igrit and his bowed head. If Igrit decided to use his sword from the beginning, would I have been able to defeat him? The ice bears, without their leader present, lost all semblance of order and became utterly confused before they were cleanly swept away by the remaining shadow soldiers. That brought about the end to the battles. The result was truly satisfying. The levels of the soldiers had risen up nicely. Also, as these shadow soldiers were seen as a part of his skill, even Jin Wu's level had risen up by three. Most of all, there was another point he found much to his liking. Rise up. And that point would be the fact that he could recruit new friends now. From the shadows of several ice bears that Jin Wu had selected, which obviously included the boss bear, black shapes began to slowly rise up. These creatures came with the name tag that said Shadow Beast Soldier. At a casual glance, they kind of resembled bears, but it was still difficult to tell whether these monsters were actually corporeal or not. They might not look that great but they are definitely the shadows of the ice bears. That explosive strength, that destructive power. Without a doubt, they would prove to be useful. His comrades screamed in despair. Kim Chiol's bloodshot eyes shot open wide. No, this can't be. How can I? How can this Kim Chiol fail? He was supposed to become the elite of the White Tiger Guild. They even trained him with the special program so he'd enter the guild's main combat force right away. However, to fail like this, he could not acknowledge it. While enduring against the biting cold and starvation, they fought off against a group of snowmen. Then, they encountered snow giants. They lost two of their numbers, but in the end, emerged victorious against the giants. He thought that the conquest of this dungeon was going according to plan. However, however, as soon as the desperate struggle against the snow giants ended, the white phantom sneak attacked from the rear as if they were waiting for this chance. These wicked, treacherous beastards had been in hiding, waiting for the raid team to exhaust all their stamina first. What happened next was a one-sided massacre. In the blink of an eye, the hunters were annihilated. Sea Captain, a fallen hunter reached out towards Kim Chiol with his bloodied hand. Kim Chiol could only retreat in faltering steps. Suddenly, a white phantom appeared on top of this fallen hunter. It pulled out a dagger and swiped it under the hunter's neck. The white phantom smiled as it sliced the neck off and raised its head to look at Kim Chiol. Kim Chiol could only scream in terror. And then, not even taking one look behind him, he ran straight into the forest. There were ice bears in the forest. Compared to snowmen, snow giants, and the white phantoms that appeared before him, those unseen ice bears came across as laughable existences right now. Kim Chiol summoned every ounce of his energy and ran, and then ran even harder. The white phantoms glared at the departing back of fleeing Kim Chiol and raised their bow, just as they took aim and got ready to fire. A white phantom with white hair extending all the way down to its waist raised its arm and stopped the attack. The white phantoms lowered their bows. When the long-haired elf signaled the others to follow Kim Chiol, the white phantoms began disappearing from where they stood one by one. Kim Chiol ran out of the thick bushes. He couldn't catch his breaths at all. Still, when he recalled the derisive smirks on the white phantoms' faces as they massacred the hunters, he felt like peeing himself from fear. Once he walked past the trees and escaped out into an open area, he was greeted by an unbelievable spectacle. But, how can this be? He found over 20 dead ice bears surrounding a cave entrance, and he thought it was odd to not see a single ice bear when every single tree was marked by them. What is going on here? Kim Chiol investigated the conditions of the carcasses. They all showed sword-inflicted wounds. Some of them even had signs of being burnt alive. Almost immediately, Kim Chiol thought about Xiang Jin Wu and the hunters following him. Did they have? Did they do this to these ice bears? No, it couldn't be. Kim Chiol shook his head. The wounds on ice bears were inflicted with long swords. As far as he knew, none of the hunters that went into the forest used a sword. Besides, the two ranky hunters didn't even wield any weapons. If you were to look at the situation objectively, then there was no chance that those people were still alive. In that case, there could be only one explanation. There are white phantoms nearby. His heart fell to the pit of his stomach. Kim Chiol walked as silently as possible and cautiously approached the source of the smell. 
and eventually, he hid inside the bush and discovered the hunters who had left along with Jin Wu. Kim Chiol's eyes grew wider from the revelation. What the hell? The smell of meat was coming from the campfire they had raised. How can they still be alive? Kim Chiol began glaring. He couldn't find one ranky hunter among their midst. He must have been killed first after taking the lead like a fool. Something didn't add up. Wait, hold up. Their attire, clothes and blankets designed to keep warm, tents and several pieces of equipment could be seen. They were obviously well prepared. Just how can this be? Kim Chiol was getting flustered even more, but then, his gaze had stopped by at a certain place. It was a piece of bread sitting next to sizzling meat. Meaning, these people even had food ready. His confusion immediately morphed into a rage. These beastards. Grit. Kim Chiol began gritting his teeth. They had enough supplies to ensure their continued survival, yet they wanted to hog them all for themselves. If my hands hadn't frozen up, no, if only I wasn't starving, I'd have easily dealt with those ice elves. Realizing that these beastards had snatched away the crucial supplies that should have been shared among the rest of the team. He couldn't hold back his fury anymore. Kim Chiol angrily ran out of the bush. You sons of BT Chess. Park Huey Jin quickly shot up from her spot, clearly surprised. Kim Chiol, how did you get here? She found it rather difficult to lie here and say it was good to see him again. Because, Kim Chiol's glare was full of murderous intent. Indeed, he didn't even bother to mask his hostility. My raid team failed to conquer this dungeon because of the lack of supplies, yet how can all of you find yourselves with this much food and this type of equipment? That is, Park Huey Jin couldn't continue on. If she mentioned Jin Wu here, then Kim Chiol's rage would be directed towards the youth. To her, Jin Wu was her savior. Also, that man always looked at Jin Wu in a suspicious manner. Park Huey Jin shut her mouth immediately. That prompted Kim Chiol's eyes to open even wider in anger. Even I don't think all of you are complicit in this crime. So, who had hidden these? Tell me the truth, and I will ignore everything else. A thick vein popped up on Kim Chiol's neck. Tell me who monopolized all the gear and drove his comrades to death. His angry roar reverberated throughout the forest. Kim Chiol was planning to shed blood here if it would appease the sin of betraying his comrades. I'll count to three. If you don't reveal who it was by then, I'll take it as the sign of all of you being complicit in this matter. Han song -hi tugged at Park Huey Jin's sleeve. Park Huey Jin hugged Han song -hi. Both Go Myung H. Wan and Yun Kai Jun swallowed their saliva as cold sweat soaked their backs. Kim Chiol was a rank even if everyone present worked together, they wouldn't be able to win against him. However, none of them still mentioned Jin Wu's name. 1. Kim Chiol yanked loose his sword from the scabbard attached to his waist. 2. Even then, the lower-ranked hunters showed not one sign of opening their mouths. How dare lower-ranked hunters ignore his order? That point alone stoked the flames of Kim Chiol's anger even higher. Just what these beastards think of me as. Murderous intent burned brightly in his eyes. He'd kill that woman first. He'd kill Park Huey Jin before anyone else, the one who betrayed the raid team and left along with these lower-ranked hunters. That's right, she left the raid team because she must have been scheming something. He could only think that way. Kim Chiol stood before Park Huey Jin and spat out the last countdown. 3. Park Huey Jin squeezed her eyes shut. It was then. 4. Cow. Kim Chiol was struck super hard by something in the back of his head and kissed the ground as his entire body slid across the snowy ground for several meters. The eyes of the hunters grew wider. Team leader. Jin Wu had hit Kim Chiol so hard that steam was still rising up from his palm. Jin Wu spoke in a dumbfounded voice. How dare you speak rubbish when it was you who drove your friends to death. Jin Wu Appa. On Songyi displayed her happiness as tears formed in her eyes. Team leader. It wasn't as much as Han Songyi. But still, the two male hunters' expressions also brightened up considerably. Jin Wu placed his finger on his lips and gestured them to keep quiet. The four people, seemingly getting ready to embrace Jin Wu at any moment now, all froze up like ice statues. Looks like Kim Chiol brought along unwanted visitors. He sensed countless presences hiding in the forest. After sensing Jin Wu's glare, the white phantoms undid their stealth and revealed themselves one by one. At a quick count, there were around 20 of them. And among them, Jin Wu's glare was fixed on a long-haired white phantom riding on horseback. That has to be the boss. An overwhelmingly mighty aura was coming from that creature, incomparably heavier than any ice bears and the white phantoms near it. If that guy wasn't the boss of this dungeon, then just who else could be? For the first time in a long while, Jin Wu's skin broke out in goosebumps. Just as Jin Wu was shivering ever so softly from its powerful aura, the boss also recognized Jin Wu's strength in one go. So, there really was one. 
a truly worthy being among all the human trash. What did you just say? When Jin Wu spat out a response purely out of reflex, the boss displayed an expression of pure surprise. You, can you understand our language? Jin Wu was also taken aback. How is it possible to converse with this guy? Not only could he understand what a monster was saying, but he could also actually converse with it, too. A language he couldn't even remember learning before fluently rolled out of his mouth as if it was his mother tongue. Is this because of the system? Like, an automatic translation feature. Jin Wu shifted his gaze back to the boss. The boss returned the gaze with great interest, to be able to converse. Very good. There is someone I wanted to introduce to you. The boss pointed at one of the white phantoms standing behind it. I'm sure you're familiar with him already. Jin Wu's glare sharpened instantly. Indeed, he recognized that particular white phantom. That guy is. That guy was none other than the B-Stard that fired an arrow at Han Song Yi before breaking out in a mocking grin. How could he forget that arrogant B-Stard's face? That exact same smile was still etched on the monster's face. This friend informed me of a truly strong being among the humans. And this friend wishes to challenge you to a duel, so how ab? Even before the boss finished his words, the night killer Jin Wu threw flew in a straight line. Stab. The white phantom collapsed on the ground. Anything else you want to say? The boss spoke up in admiration. You are indeed very strong. Then, it climbed off the horse. However, as if it wasn't planning to fight yet, it didn't draw its weapons nor showed any willingness to engage in battles. So, I shall make a simple suggestion. A suggestion? That's right. It won't be such a bad suggestion for yourself. Jin Wu was inwardly surprised. It was a well-known fact that humanoid-type monsters possessed intelligence. But he never expected to see a monster trying to negotiate with a human. I'll hear it. The boss smiled as if it had expected that answer and opened its mouth. Before that, I want to ask you something. Why are you among these humans when you're not one of them? Jin Wu's expression crumpled deeply. What nonsense are you talking about? It seems that you have no idea. The boss guffawed out loudly, before pointing to its temple. Every one of us can hear a certain voice repeating itself in our heads. It tells us to kill humans. However, I can't hear that voice when I'm looking at you. Ah, uh, that's what this guy meant. In that case, Jin Wu could think of a reason for that. When the boss says humans, it's probably talking about hunters. The thing was, he had changed to this strange something called player through the system. During his ordeal in the underground temple, technically speaking, he was slightly different from other hunters, meaning other awakened human beings. That's why that guy thinks I'm not a human. That made perfect sense. The boss nodded its head. There is no need for us to fight each other, and our side does not wish to see needless casualties as well. The boss finally got to the main topic. Hand over the humans behind you. Then, we will guarantee your life. How does my suggestion sound to you? Before he answered, Jin Wu asked back. I want to ask you something, too. Fine, go ahead. Just who are you? Where did you come from? And why do you wish to kill humans? We are. It happened then. The smiling face of the boss suddenly froze stiff. But, that odd state lasted only for a brief moment. The boss regained its original expression and continued on. There is no need for us to fight each other, and our side does not wish to see needless casualties, as well. What the hell was that? Jin Wu frowned deeply. The boss repeated itself like an NPC from a game that was asked a question that was not in the script, or one that it was not permitted to answer, to begin with. Hand over the humans behind you. Then, we will guarantee your life. How does my suggestion sound to you? Its expression showed how relaxed it was. In other words, it had not recognized how odd its own actions were. The white phantom standing behind didn't display any reaction towards the boss's strange behavior, either. Jin Wu continued to wordlessly observe then, prompting the boss to begin urging him. Will you accept my suggestion or not? Jin Wu wanted to find out more about the monster's origins and their true intentions, but as it turned out, it was all a waste of time. In that case, the only thing remaining was to choose. But then again, he had made up his mind already a long time ago. I refuse. The corners of Jin Wu's lips arched up. You see, you possess a far too tempting shadow for me to let go. Are you planning to fight my soldiers all by yourself? Do you truly believe that you can overcome the disadvantages in numbers all alone? Jin Wu smirked derisively. Soldiers, was it? You think you're the only one? I've got them too. He summoned his shadows. According to his wishes, the soldiers hiding in Jin Wu's shadow all revealed themselves in the blink of an eye right behind him. The cry came from the hunters this time as well. Yun Kai Jun cried out in fright as the shadow of the ice bear, the shadow beast soldier, suddenly materialized right next to him and he fell hard on his ass. When Jin Wu took a glance at the pale faces of the surviving raid team, he felt that it was a bit regretful. But this was an emergency situation. 
There was no time to explain things to them here. Well, I wouldn't explain things to them even if this wasn't an emergency, though. After summoning 29 shadow soldiers, Jin Wu stood before them and glared at the boss. So, who's disadvantaged now? Finally, the boss displayed its hostility. You seem to know some petty tricks, don't you? Fine. If it's your wish, I shall grant your death. The boss unsheathed two daggers from his sides. Petty tricks, is it? The boss had a point there. Jin Wu might hold an advantage in numbers, but his army was slightly lacking if he wanted to hunt the boss down. Jin Wu knew this very well. The boss's self-confidence could have come from this fact. Indeed, he now needed more comrades. Powerful comrades. If it's a powerful comrade, then. There was one candidate here. Jin Wu sneaked a glance to his side. The still unconscious Kim Chiol was lying there, unmoving. Attack. When the boss issued the order, the white phantoms pulled on their bowstrings. Bears. Jin Wu placed the beast soldiers at the front. The beast soldiers, with arrows sticking out of their bodies, all roared out in anger. Before the white phantoms could knock the next volley of arrows, the infantrymen rushed forward. The magic soldiers also began chanting their spells. Meanwhile, Jin Wu's eyes gleamed dangerously. You're mine. Jin Wu deliberately pushed Kim Chiol's longsword towards its owner with his heel, before pouncing forward himself as well. His sight was fixed solely on the boss of the White Phantoms. The boss too was waiting for Jin Wu's arrival. Soon, sparks endlessly flew as the four daggers wielded by two creatures clashed in midair. At the same time, the Shadow Soldiers and White Phantoms also slammed into each other as well. Go Myung H. Wen looked at Park Huey Jin next to him. So, like, shouldn't we lend assistance here? Park Huey Jin shook her head. This isn't a fight where we can butt in, you know. This was a battle where huge black monsters were swinging their giant claws. The destroyed black soldiers were regenerating to their original state in the blink of an eye. And the gleaming blades and the arrows fired from the upper rank monsters, white phantoms, were chaotically flying around in the snowy field. So, what can a rank B or C do in this place? Indeed, the only thing they were permitted to do here was to pray. Jin Wu gasped out, as expected of a boss from the high-ranking dungeon. The fight looked to be even from the side, but Jin Wu was getting cut and sliced constantly all over his body. Would he be able to last three minutes at this rate? His MP was also rapidly depleting away as his soldiers constantly regenerated. Finally, the magic soldiers managed to finish their chance. A ball of flames larger than a volleyball flew in the midst of the white phantoms. Kaboom. That was the power of the leveled up magic soldiers in full display. Awakened by the resounding eardrum shaking explosion, Kim Chiol regained his consciousness and opened his eyes. Kim Chiol raised his head to look. Clang, clang. His blurry vision picked up on the sight of white phantoms fighting against the unknown black soldiers. What the hell is going on here? He couldn't figure out what happened while he blacked out, but at least he knew very well why he was lying on the ground like this. The hand that slapped him in the back of his head, and the voice that came from behind him. That voice definitely belonged to Xiang Jin Wu. Now that he had regained his bearing, the sense of shame and rage bubbled over like crazy, and the ends of his fingertips trembled. How fortunate that he could feel the hilt of his sword. If he was surrounded by the white phantoms, then he'd not get out of here alive. In that case, he must. I'll kill that bestard Xiang Jin Wu with my own hands. His maddened eyes finally spotted the back of Xiang Jin Wu. There he was. He was too busy fighting a white phantom and wasn't paying any attention to his rear. This was his chance. Kim Chiol stood up right away. After sensing Kim Chiol running towards him, Jin Wu laughed out inwardly in elation. Right, if it's you. Kim Chiol ran with all his might and after taking aim at Jin Wu's neck, swung the sword, hard. Die. In front, the boss. From behind, Kim Chiol. Even though he was stuck in a seemingly dangerous situation, Jin Wu still managed to shout out. Igret. As if he'd been waiting for that call, Igret jumped out from his shadow immediately and easily deflected Kim Chiol's sword. Clang. No. Kim Chiol's bloodshot eyes opened wider. However, even before he could say anything, Igret's sword pierced deeply into his chest. Stab. The blade ran straight through his chest and emerged from his back. I knew Kim Chiol would act this way. This fool was someone who didn't think about anything in depth and only acted according to his emotions. They had been together only for a short while. But that was enough for Jin Wu to figure this guy out. Kim Chiol glared at Jin Wu. And with that, Kim Chiol breathed his last. As Igret stepped up to delay the boss, Jin Wu issued an order to the shadow of the dead Kim Chiol. Rise up. When that happened, accompanied by a heavy, somber cry, a huge hand emerged from the shadow. The black knight that emerged from Kim Chiol's shadow was far bigger and sturdier than the original version. And it even carried a huge war hammer in one hand as well. The other hand held a shield as tall as a grown man 
and the overall impression this guy gave off was truly oppressive and threatening. Kim Chiao was a muscular man, but this shadow is just too over the top. Even though it was an urgent situation, Jin Wu couldn't help but leak out a gasp of admiration. All right, the name. Jin Wu sneaked a glance to his side. Perhaps finding the battle quite tough, Igrit was having a hard time right now, being pushed around by the boss. Currently, he was barely buying enough time by relying on his cheat-like regenerative ability. Slice, Igrit's arm was sliced off, then. I don't have much time to waste here. A name, was it? Should he go with whatever? Maybe, Kim Chiol. Jin Wu immediately shook his head. To call an undead with a name it used while it was still alive. That just didn't sit well with him, right? His name was Kim Chiol. Chiol, so iron, it is. The name had been decided. As soon as Jin Wu thought of that name, it was bestowed on the newly birthed Shadow Knight. Jin Wu pointed to the boss. Iron. Iron leaned back and roared out loudly. What was that? Several messages popped up in his view. An aggro skill. Kim Chiol was actually a rank a tanker. So, quite obviously, he possessed a high-level aggro skill. And the Shadow Knight extracted from his shadow, Iron, had retained that skill in full and was able to use it no problem. The head of the boss swiveled towards Iron. Although it could have chosen to finish Igrid off right in front of its eyes, the boss simply pounced on Iron as if it had been hypnotized by a ghost or some such. The boss was still preoccupied with Iron. And seizing this chance, Jin Wu and Igrit's combined assault began on the boss. Hark Huey Jin became utterly speechless as the unbelievable spectacle unfolded right before her eyes. What she was seeing right now proved to be too unrealistic, too outlandish. From her side, Han Song Yi asked her with a timid voice, Do all fights of hunters look like that? She must have been frightened silly, because Han Song Yi's voice was trembling noticeably. Park Huey Jin replied to her, sounding helpless as well. If that were the case, then I'd never have earned my license, you know. Go Myung H. Wen asked next, looking utterly dazed out of his mind. Could it be that we are dreaming right now? Park Huey Jin looked back at the battlefield where the monsters and the black somethings were having a chaotic throwdown, and spat out a long sigh. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.